Something coming faster than any of us can imagine and will change our lives in the most dramatic ways is AI. And while AI used to sound freaky to me and just something that was gonna take over my world, it really would have revolutionized my practice had I stuck around. Many of you know, I got so burnt out from charting was the big reason I left medicine because it was frustrated with the EMRs, the clunkiness, and the amount of time it took to learn them. Not only that, but not being able to sit and connect with a patient and look them in the eye, like one-on-one -on -one while you're actually interacting with them. The whole reason we went into medicine, not to do paperwork. Yeah, so that's why May and I have started working with Lindy.ai, which is fascinating. They help you produce the most efficient notes, fully customizable, which is different than some other AI products. So you can do what you do best, which is see patients and let the artificial intelligence scribe do the dirty work for you. Yeah, not only do you get the perfect patient notes the way you want, written in any format, for whatever specialty you're in, and maybe you're in ophthalmology or vet medicine, it will also create the note, scribe and send the patient follow-up instructions, referral letters, consultation notes. It's amazing. Lindy is offering our listeners a seven-day trial to experience the difference of their AI medical scribe. Go sign up at lindy.ai slash BS free to get started. That is lindy, L-I-N-D-Y dot A-I slash BS free. Finally, a source of raw, real, and honest information on healthcare issues that matter most. Welcome to BS free MD latest medical information to how to stay sane as a doctor or a patient. No subject is taboo. No BS is allowed. Now, let's welcome your hosts, Drs. May and Tim Heinmarsh. Welcome to Doc Tales with Cocktails, or Doc Tail, as there's only one doc here right now. My lovely wife had to, unfortunately, spirit herself back to the land of not freedom and not brave. We will get to that and why Canada sucks in a little while. But you have to go back up to Canada to deal with some family business. Enough said. So I'm flying solo, which uh, which means people have described our relationship as gas and break. Guess who's the break? It's not me. So um, to quote Ozzy Osbourne, we may be... Uh, well, we may be uh, running off the rails on a crazy train tonight. We'll see what happens. Can I stay on task? Absolutely not. Will I lose my marbles? Guaranteed. And I have a new outfit because I can wear whatever I want. And May won't say I look ridiculous because I'm a cowboy on a steel horse I ride. Yes, I do. And I'm wanted. Dead or alive. All right, let's get going. Let's get going. We're going to talk about several things. We're going to talk about whether bird flu is going to kill the entire world. We'll get to that later. We're going to talk about <clears throat> why some people shouldn't be in Congress because they're idiots. And we're going to talk about some Canadian laws and why, why the First and Second Amendment in the United States actually matter, like greatly, actually. To quote Trump, hugely. It's insane. You, 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 can't, you, some fundamental rights in Canada are being challenged, and it's it's kind of almost nauseating. I got to get my my um, notes up here and get ready to party. All right, let's get after it. Let's get after it. Number one, this is a video uh, from uh, Toronto or one of the suburbs of Toronto about uh, how you should not get your car stolen. Let's just listen. I'll do some commentary, and then we'll, uh, we'll continue to discuss. Chime in. Ask whatever you want. Here Action we go. from police as well. There's also updated advice for all vehicle owners. A message echoed by Toronto police speaking at an Etobicoke safety meeting last month. Constable Marco Ricciardi had a new message for vehicle owners who keep their fobs in Faraday pouches. To prevent 
the possibility of being attacked in your home, leave your fobs at your front door because they're breaking into your home home to steal your car. They're, they don't want anything else. A lot of them that they're arresting have guns on them and they're not toy guns, they're real guns. They're loaded. That's why Galinsky says they will be installing the. That makes a tremendous amount of sense. Come and rob old people because you just want their cars. We'll just give you the cars. Thanks, Canada. Door stops and taking YPR's advice seriously. But she'd like more action from police as well. I got to get my. There we go. I need a producer. I can't do everything myself. But anyways, so. So you can't defend yourself because everyone's disarmed in Canada. You can't. Dis- the police aren't going to be there because you can't have a policeman for every single person. So just let them steal your freaking car. Now, people say, why did you move to Florida? Here is one reason. Why- we don't know what homeowner, which homeowner shot at him. Um, I guess they think that they did something wrong, which they did not. If somebody's breaking in your house, you're more than welcome to shoot them in Santa Rosa County. We prefer that you do, actually. Um, so did you hear that? In Santa Rosa County, Florida, if somebody breaks into your house and you shoot them, you don't have to ask them how long they were nursed, whether or not their mother loved them, whether or not they were a child of trauma, you just shoot them. And actually, we prefer if you do, because then we just send the corridor and we don't tie up a bunch of police officers. That's the difference when you're allowed to defend yourself. Let's listen to that again. It's like music. The person, we don't know what homeowner, which homeowner shot at him. Um, I guess they think that they did something wrong, which they did not. If somebody's breaking in your house, you're more than welcome to shoot them in Santa Rosa County. We prefer that you do, actually. Um, So the person, we don't. Outstanding. That is like, talk about. Leave your keys because you're going to get robbed and we don't want you murdered or just defend your freaking self. And we would appreciate your help in, you know, getting, you know, cleansing the streets of dirt bags. Unbelievable. But it gets worse. It gets way, way worse. Way, 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 way worse. This is a long clip. It's about three minutes. We'll probably go through the whole thing. I think it's worth watching the whole thing. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing, actually. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little heads up. So there's this kid from India that traveled to Canada to get an education at a university in Ontario. And he's from India, and he's working in a Circle K because no Indians have ever worked in Circle Ks ever. I know. I'm sorry. I'm kidding. I'm a dick. Sorry. At any rate. The guy gets robbed by a fentanyl addict who has a baseball bat concealed in a bag. So it's a concealed weapon. Wax this guy with the thing three times. He wrestles it away because the guy's a fentanyl addict and not exactly a, you know, Brazilian jujitsu champion. Wax the shit out of this guy. We have video and He gets charged with aggravated assault and up to 14 years in jail. Meanwhile, fentanyl boy who was trying to knock off the convenience store gets 14 months. You can't make this shit up. Here we go. Shoulder here, the Circle K in Peterborough, Ontario. He's working the overnight shift to help pay his rent because he's an international student going to Sir Sanford Fleming. And what happens? A man comes in with a balaclava with sunglasses, a hat. And okay, what the hell is a bala? It's balaclava, not whatever the hell you said. Come on, Canada, learn English. Video shows he was hiding a baseball bat. That bat came out. So I felt like fear for my safety, and whatever I did, that was just a self defense to save my life first. And I felt bad for that. However, Peterborough police decided to charge Kalia with aggravated assault. He's still before the courts. Um, We know that Tej was the victim of uh, an assault because the person who assaulted him has gone to jail. This is not 
how it's supposed to be in Canada, or anywhere for that matter. But we can help to do something about that here, and we're going to. Now, here in Peterborough on this snowy day, the original attacker, Jonathan Handel, was in court, where he pled guilty to robbery and other charges and was sentenced to 14 months in the Lindsay Jail. Even through all... So he's sentenced to 14 months because he's a drug addict, ergo he's a victim. He's a victim of whatever bullshit mental illness crap. No, he's a predator who tried to rip off a convenience store and got his ass kicked because he's a drug addict. Like, how, how does this not make sense? I do not understand this. Canada, stop being nice. Stop apologizing. Start being badasses. It's a freaking country full of badasses. The trucker convoy proved that. Hockey. Come on, man. It's your national pastime. You can move your body in a small space, 30 miles an hour, and everyone gets a weapon. Let, let's get going. It's time. All right. Stan, this is insanity. This should not exist. The fact that this is even, even a consideration that somebody can be charged with aggravated assault for smacking somebody twice with a bat when they were smacked twice, when the guy's intent was obviously to steal and to potentially kill him, I guarantee you what's going to happen. They're going to argue the crown, in other words, the district attorney for my American friends, they're going to say he shouldn't have hit him twice. He should have just hit him once. Well, he didn't know if he's unconscious. He's jacked up on adrenaline. He's a guy from freaking God knows where in India trying to improve his life. Canada welcomes him. Great. He's willing to work at a Circle K. Awesome. And he defends himself, and somehow he's charged. Are you kidding me? Here we go. All right. This, this one, I have, to get my, uh, I have to get my notes going because this is too delicious to even comprehend. <laughs> like you have to it, – it's one of those things where it, it's proof we're living in a simulation. And uh, let me see. Let me get it right. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So – I will pull this up, this story, or story from my Canadian friends. Representative Sheila Jackson Lee tells students the moon is a planet made up mostly of gases. Okay, let's read this article because it's absolutely unbelievable. Uh, Sheila Jackson Lee says simply she misspoke. When in a speech to school children this week, she confidently explained that the moon is made up mostly of gases. Speaking at Booker R. Washington High School in Houston before the solar eclipse, Jackson Lee made a series of bizarre remarks in which she also incorrectly referred to the moon as a planet. A full moon is that complete rounded circle which is made up mostly of gases. And that's why the question is why or how could we as humans live on the moon, she said, or the gases such that we could do that. The sun is mighty powerful heat. The sun is mighty powerful heat. But it's almost impossible to go near the sun. Not impossible. Almost impossible. I live in Florida. It's almost impossible to go outside in August. And the sun is still several million miles away. And yes, guess what, Sheila? It's made up mostly of gas. <sighs> the moon is more manageable than the sun. You can't make this shit up. You will see a couple years that NASA is going back to the moon. Because NASA planted a flag in 1969 on the moon because the moon is made up mostly of gases because you can plant a flag in gases. Obviously. In a press release promoting the car's uh, appearance to the school, her office pointed out that Jackson had previously served as a member. Okay. You cannot make this up. She has been in Congress for 29 years. She's in Houston. Do you know what's in Houston? NASA. More specifically, Mission Control. Houston 
we have a problem. And your problem is Sheila Jackson Lee. Yes, it is. In a press conference promoting the Congresswoman's appearance at the school, her office pointed out that Jackson Lee had previously served as a member of the Science Committee and the ranking member on the Space and Aeronautics Subcommittee, and that she would be there to highlight the experience of the eclipse. Except she's retarded. Science Committee. You cannot make this up. You cannot make this up. We are in a simulation. It is just absolutely crazy. Uh, okay, so then the clips came out, and then she had to reply on X because she was losing her shit because people were saying you're essentially insane. And then, of course, whose fault is it that she made these claims? Obviously, Republicans' fault. Obviously, I misspoke and meant to say the sun, but as usual, Republicans are forced on stupid things instead of stuff that really matters. What can I say? Yeah, What really matters is you not being retarded, actually. What can I say, though? Foolish thinkers lust for stupidity. Well, you would be right at the front of the lust pile then, wouldn't you? Some users replied to point out that if that was true, then what she was actually intending to ask, whether or not human beings could live on the sun, is arguably more baffling than being under the misapprehension that the moon is made of gas. Jackson Lee went on to say that Republicans should focus less on calling her out and more on prenatal care, affordable housing, and reducing student debt. Yes, so people can go to... Oh, yes, reducing student debt. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about reducing student debt, shall we? What school did you go to, Ms. Lee? What school was it? Was it a good school? Was it a bad school? You went to, you got a law degree from, you went where? To freaking Yale! You went to one of the highest rated Ivy League schools in the United States, and you think the moon is made out of gas and that Republicans are gaslighting you because they're calling you out on being idiotic. You can't, like, it, strangely, this is, <laughs> I love this. I love this. Strangely, this isn't the first time Jackson Lee has Isn't it strange that her name is Jackson Lee? Or is it just me? But it's like two Southern heroes, Stonewall Jackson and General Lee. I don't know. Whatever. Strangely, this isn't the first time Jackson Lee has made a public gaffe related to the moon. While serving on the House Science Committee, trust the science, in 1997, she reportedly asked if the Mars Pathfinder rover had managed to capture images of an American flag planted on the red planet by Neil Armstrong, presumably incorrectly referring to the flag Armstrong planted on the moon in 1969. 29 years. This year will be here. 29th year in Congress. 29 years. You just cannot make this up. Like literally governed by imbeciles. Okay. All right. Let me check the questions because I have been ranting. Uh, okay. Look at this. Wow. My wife from Canada is engaging with the audience. I love it. Very, very good. Okay, let's move to the next story, which is my last story. And then I'm going to talk about what I'm drinking because it's absolutely complete and total 100%. Let's do that. Let's do that next. Let's talk about what I'm drinking next because it's so amazing. So here we go. We're going to go to this slide. This is me, obviously at the Loaded Cannon Distillery, which is literally 1.92 miles from my house. How do I know how far it is? Because I ride my electric bicycle there. 
every Wednesday. And now we have started to meet new friends and hang out with other distilled spirit lovers like Betty and Marty and the lovely Alana who makes the cocktails, which are amazing. What am I drinking tonight is truly transcendent. It is called Margoza Gin. Okay, this is gin that they age in whiskey barrels. It is like their unbelievably high-end bourbons had a baby with their gin. And it is absolutely amazing. I, I cannot even really describe it other than if you mix this with something, you're as smart as Sheila Jackson Lee because it's so good straight. So that's what I shall do. So there's me at the Loaded Cannon. You shall notice that up in the corner there is a uh, skeleton of a uh, pirate going for some rum. And then here is my lovely wife, which that's a look that I'm completely used to getting, which is, you said what? <laughs> that's the, you said what look? And then behind her, you will notice all the accoutrement of a distillery because they make the stuff right there. And then every Thursday night, they have trivia and food carts or food truck. And unfortunately, I work most Thursdays or I'd be there every time, every weekend or every Thursday. It's a great place. If you're anywhere near Lakewood Ranch, Florida, go there. They're great people. They'll take you on a tour. They'll explain how they make all this. And um, all I can say is, Wow. I, there we go. I'm back. More goes a gin. Big shout out there. We have one more story to get to. And I think it's really important because I, I honestly have no idea where it's going to go, like which direction it's going to go. Um, up, down, inside, outside, back, forward, whatever. So I want to spend a few minutes discussing it. And it is, uh, I got to get this, let me get to the right slide. I think that's the right slide. We're going to do that, and then we're going to do that, and there we go. All right. Okay, virus 100, virus 100 times worse than COVID puts the world close to potential pandemic or whatever. Okay, so this is avian flu, H5N1. H5N1 we have known about for a long time. When I sat on the parent board of a seven hospital system back in Oregon, way back when we were all losing our ever loving shit over H5N1. And that was back in 2009 during H1N1, which was, you know, the reemergence of what was supposed to be swine flu. So why is everybody lose their ever loving marbles over um, H5N1 or, or avian flu? Okay. First of all, Flus have this massive, influenzas have this massive uh, zoonotic presence in birds. Birds carry flus, okay? So the way they're named is H is hemagglutinin and N is neuramidase, these, these proteins that the uh, influenza viruses produce. So they label them based on, you know, how they found them. So H5N1, the reason it's a big deal is H5N1 is about 50% fatal in humans. So if you get avian flu, you got about a 50-50 chance of dying. End of story. So this story has become super blown up in the last week because there was a cattle worker or a, I think it was a dairy worker in um, Texas who got infected with H5N1. How they figured this out, I have... No idea, because the only symptom he had was a red eye. He had viral conjunctivitis, I believe, in only one eye, and they still figured out it was H5N1, which makes one scratch their head. Why are they looking for H5N1? All of my conspiracy friends are scratching our heads, and we are saying, hmm, are they actually... 
are they actually gain of functioning avian flu like they did with with covid viruses and that they're freaking out because if it gets out maybe they messed with it i don't know that's the question because no one tr trusts these guys anymore are they messing with avian flu that has a 50 percent mortality in humans if here's the thing that's made h5n1 not an issue it's only been transmitted from birds to humans it's never been transmitted from birds to humans and then humans to humans if you had human to human transfer of h5n1 with the same contagious ability of covid you could kill more than a billion people the issue is viruses that kill that much don't transmit very well because they kill the host. So there's kind of a natural stopgap in super virulent viruses. It's not in the virus's best interest to be lethal. It's in its best interest to be contagious, which means it shouldn't be too lethal or else it's going to cause, it's going to burn itself out. So the question is, are they freaking out about H5N1 because they know something that we don't know because they've been messing with it? Or is it just another monkeypox fear porn of the month club where they're throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks? Because guess what? It's an election year. My guess is, I don't know. It's probably the latter. If they're really using humanized mice and trying to increase virulence of H5N1, they are absolute, you know, Nazi level monsters at that point. Like that is so potentially monstrous to humanity. If that got out, if you had highly virulent flu that killed 50% of the people that got it, that that's that's a completely different level of of genocide, whatever you want to say. Oh, my lovely wife posted. COVID lockdown at the care facility again. That's right, because you got to cut down a care facility for a cold. Have they said how many people have died? How many have gone to the hospital? How many people had, you know, got the terminal sniffles? Like, it's completely insane because they name it COVID. I see this every single day. People come in and they're like, well, I tested myself and it's not COVID. I'm like, yeah, because you're 10 times sicker than you would be with COVID. Because most of the people right now, thankfully, I don't know how long this will last, are not very sick with COVID. They have a cold. The people with influenza want to die because it's awful. But if you believe, and I'm going to end with this, if you believe Gert Vandenbosch, who I think is a genius, he was a, one of Bill Gates' actually uh, vaccinologists, he thinks that the um, countries that distributed the you-know-what the most are the ones that are going to be potentially hammered with a new sub-sub-sub-sub-sub-variant that ends up becoming way more dangerous and contagious because their immune systems have been so completely and utterly plugged up with repeated interventions, so, shall we say. So we will see if Gert has uh, an inside track. Um, he is a genius. His stuff is incredibly hard to read. It's very sciency, down to the you know submolecular compounds of each antibody and antigen and whatnot. So it, it's it's pretty intense. But at any rate, unless anybody else has any other questions, we're going to actually, you know, you get half, you get half the team, you get half the time, you get half an hour instead of an hour. Um, but, uh, Canada, please, you're an amazing country with amazing people. I'm proud to be from there. Stop being dipshits, please just stop. Just stop it. You're better than that. All right. I shall shuffle off to my new bedroom suite full of new furniture and we shall see you next week. Stay BS free. It's no secret that medicine is a bit um, uptight. That's why Tim and I created BS Free MD. 
to mix things up a little and have fun in the process. Besides, we are having these exact same discussions all the time, so we thought we might as well invite everyone to the party. If you really like us, you can get plenty more and maybe see one of Tim's cool tattoos on our Instagram or Facebook pages at BS Free MD. See you next time. But we try to keep BS Free MD as raw and real as possible. We can't be held responsible for any medical decisions or discussions had as a result of what you've heard on the show. We know. Bummer. But the truth is, we really do care about your questions. So feel free to reach out to us by email at doc at bsfreemd.com.